Good. How are things? I'm sure you get asked that all the time. Uh, yeah. I mean, they're, they're better now that um, things are more official, I guess. Like you're not just kind of sitting at home waiting for updates. Now you kind of like know a little bit more. So it's a little bit less stressful, but I mean, we're still closed at home and like on lockdown. So mm-hmm. I guess it's less stressful as less stressful as it can be. What city, are, what city um, are you living in right now? I'm in Modena. It's Northern Italy. Mm-hmm. And how long have you been on lockdown now? Um, we started lockdown towards the beginning of March. So when I first came out here, because um, I flew, we were supposed to have training camp in Barcelona at the beginning of March, and then that got canceled due to the virus. So I just came straight to Italy. And then so I was back for, I think, a week. So I want to say like the second week of March, they put us on lockdown. But it used to be a lockdown where you had to stay at home as much as you could, but you were still able to go for a run or walk around and just kind of like keep your distance. And then things got worse. So now it's complete lockdown. And you can only leave your house if you're going to the grocery store or to the hospital for emergencies. So you can't even go for a run. You can't even go for a walk anymore. So it's kind of a little bit more intense, but it's what's needed, I guess, at this point. Yeah. Kind of be a little bit positive about it <laughs> <laughs> as much as I can. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, we're currently in lockdown. Uh, well, they, every city has a, a different name for it. But yeah. it's like called shelter and stay here. And um, I feel like here in the States, it's starting to become real, but not real, real mm-hmm. in, in certain places. Uh, what's, it, what's it like when you're looking around? Because I, I imagine that like you poke your head outside sometimes to get a breath of like fresh air and like to see the blue sky. Fresh air, <laughs> yeah. My, my 30 minutes outside on my balcony. Mm-hmm. Um, It's crazy different because I live right in the city center. Our apartment is right in the middle of the city center. So we're always used to people being outside, um, walking around, getting coffee, shopping, tourists. Um, So our city is usually always just packed with people Um, from like the morning to night, especially on the weekend. We have bars right under our apartment. So there's always music and just a lot of action going on and now I look outside and it's like ghost town like completely empty all the shops are closed all the bars are closed um there's the occasional people that leave the house to throw the trash away or to go to the pharmacy but it's maybe two people every 30 minutes or to an hour so it's it's complete silence just it's really weird to see and kind of like makes it a little bit more intense when you see it. Cause you're just like, okay, it's like, it's like a movie almost. Mm -hmm. Um, But I don't want to, like, I feel like it's weird saying you kind of get used to it, but like now you're kind of just used to the silence and not having people. So I feel like the moment we're able to actually like go back to our normal lives, it's going to be really different. Oh yeah. 100%. Do you feel like you've been challenged kind of uh, mentally and emotionally during this quarantine Mm -hmm. period? Mentally, especially. um, It's just, it's hard to find the motivation to keep training or working out or doing something productive when you're kind of just stuck at home by yourself. Like with, I'm not by myself, I have my parents, but like by yourself as in like without your teammates or without a friend that's like telling you, okay, let's, let's go out and go for a run and so sometimes you just catch yourself um on the couch just be like okay well I have all the time in the world now like I could just do it later I could do it later and then you end up not doing anything the whole day so it's really hard to just kind of like force yourself to just get up and keep moving and to do something productive and to not just waste these days yeah Um, especially since it started off as us thinking it would only last a week or two and now it's almost been three weeks to a month and we still have a couple of more weeks to go. So I guess like the positive outlook on it is like what's some new things I can learn about myself or about um, the situation. And like, I got into coloring, which I haven't done in a very long time. So I color, I um, been reading a lot of books and just watching some series on Netflix and Mm -hmm. 
trying to think of new work plans, which is also fun. So I've been trying to find new things. Uh, what books have you been reading? Um, I'm reading a romance thriller right now. So just kind of trying to spice things up in my head, um, yeah. keep things active. But it's called The Wives. Um, Tori Vidal is actually mentioned oh it. Oh my God. Earlier, I was going to. So I got it from her. <laughs> I was going to. As soon as you said romance thriller, it made me think of Tori because I, I talked to her yeah, uh, last I week. Saw, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And she's all I about it. I saw her post it and she's like 10 out of 10. I'm like, okay, well, I need a new book. So like, what's it called? And I just started reading it and it's really good. So mm-hmm. shout out to Tori. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like uh, Tori gets people into books and also Sam Fisher. That's what I've... Sam Fisher, yeah. If mm-hmm. I if I didn't see Tori post a book, I would have probably gone to Sam Fisher. Mm-hmm. That would have been my next go-to for books. yeah. Amazing. Yeah, I noticed I was kind of scrolling through your your Twitter and I felt like you were kind of getting deep in there. Um, You you talked about, uh, these are just a couple of them. Uh, This whole quarantine really got me thinking a lot about uh, what what I took for granted. So as soon as it's over and everyone is healthy, I'm playing softball as much as I can and in, in seeing the world. Uh, take me back to uh, that time when you wrote that and why. Um, I had just seen a lot of articles on Facebook, um, positive articles about how the world is right now that everyone is at home. And so like um, in Venice, the water's clean and there's dolphins in the canals and LA there's less traffic and I see like a lot of all these European cities um, like Rome is all looks a lot cleaner now and it's like all these positive things that are happening that we probably aren't really paying attention to around us just because we're so focused on what's happening right now with the virus and so I was just kind of uh, sitting in my bed and I was like the first thing I want to do when I get out of quarantine or lockdown is I want to be able to go see all these beautiful places that um, we maybe take for granted or uh, we probably haven't been taking care of as much as we should have been. Um, and then obviously softball is always on my mind and everything with the Olympics, just try to play as much as I can because I don't think I've ever stayed this far away from being active and being an athlete or let alone being stuck in my house. I don't think I've been home for this long in a really long time. And so it's just putting everything in perspective um, and just try not to take those little things for granted anymore. Right. So yeah, that was pretty much the whole tweet. <laughs> but Because right now it feels like we're all in jail. <laughs> that's what I, I was, because I also watched this um, Netflix series and it's pretty much women, these women in jail. And I was just kind of like watching. I was like, that's like us right now, mm-hmm. except for we don't have people to talk to <laughs> the way people in jail do. Yeah. Um, so we're like legit on lockdown. But mm-hmm. yeah, it's almost like being in jail and just kind of counting down the days until you can go back to your normal life. Yeah, I know it's not real jail, but in jail in the sense of like the reason why it's hard to find motivation is because typically when we come home, our our kitchen, our living space, our and our bedroom, our place is a sanctuary. And now we have to like overlap that with like now it's my workout space, now it's my mm-hmm. office space. So <laughs> it's like all these things are kind of clashing together, and I, I think a lot of us internally resist it because it's like no no no, this space is for me to relax, not for me to be doing yeah. push up <laughs> challenges, you know. <laughs> so. I think squat it, your squat your <laughs> lockdown mate. Yeah. Yeah, you you posted another tweet uh that I liked. You said when we disconnect from our pain, we stop growing. When we are dominated by our pain, we stop growing. Freedom is observing our pain, letting it go and moving forward. Why'd you post that? Um that was just a lot of um I guess I have a lot of time to think now. So um, a lot of things going through my mind, just personal things and then stuff with uh, softball and with life itself and like where I'm going with my life and where I am at 
right now at this age. And um, I feel like a lot of people go through hard things and emotional things and being in this lockdown, it's made me kind of go back to those places of maybe like where I struggled and some, some things that may have happened to me that I probably pushed away and never really spent the time to like figure myself out or figure out what I'm feeling. So I kind of kept just hiding it and like burying it and stacking one onto the other. And so I've been reading this, um, this book, by Young Pueblo, I think his name is. And it just kind of um, explains to you how important it is to feel your pain and to understand what you're going through, but not to sulk in it. It's more of like you feel it, you understand what you're going through, why you went through it and what it's um, led you to be. And then you let it go. You have to actually let it go and move on. And I feel like a lot of people tend to just keep holding on to that pain either pushing it aside or actually just kind of holding on to it and um, and just soaking in it or like being the victim in it and not letting go. And I think um, after I read that phrase, it really stuck to me and stuck with some of the situations that I caught myself in and um, how important it is to just feel it as much as you can, understand it, let it go, and then move forward and not look back. Mm-hmm. And so I think that really helped me. Yeah, right on. I think um, also that totally resonates with me in the sense of um, the more we push push it down or distract ourselves so we don't think about it, it always pops up again. And that's what I was, I I caught Mm -hmm. myself saying to one of my teammates is I feel like it's harder on me now thinking about those situations because I don't have something to distract me. Like I don't have softball. Mm-hmm. I would always distract myself with softball or going to the gym and now I don't have that. And so now I actually really have to feel my emotions and I'm not used to that. And so um, that really helped me just to understand that it's good to feel the emotions. You just have to move on from it. Yeah. And I also think like whatever you're feeling, right. It, it evokes an actual like physiological response. I think that's your body and your mind or your spirit, like trying to tell you something and Mm -hmm. it's, you got to listen to it. Yeah. I will fuck with you. It will. It really will. And you don't (laughs) think about it until that moment. It like creeps back and you're just like, yeah, I could have let, I could have let this go and it still stay Mm -hmm. with me, but yeah, it's a work in progress. Yeah, definitely a work in progress. Mm Mm-hmm kind of uh talking about uh dealing with um emotions and such obviously you've trained a very long time for this 2020 Mm -hmm. olympics and um it's postponed uh what was your your Mm -hmm. first reaction to having that news uh because i'm i'm assuming when all the news about coronavirus like kept popping up popping up and popping up and things were getting canceled left and right. I think everybody was like, are the Olympics next? Next. Uh, what was your My, reaction? Um, when the virus first came and th- things started to get canceled, my first worry was the Olympics just because this would, this would have been my first Olympics. So I'm not someone, I'm not used to like how things work or like how big of an event it really is. So my first thought was, will they cancel it or is it too big of an event to cancel and they'll postpone it? So I kept going back and forth. I'm like, I really hope they just postpone it. Like I can't Mm -hmm. have them cancel the Olympics. Like it's such a big dream for so many people. Um, And so that kept going through my head. But I think the moment they officially said that the Olympics were postponed, I got a sigh of relief almost just because we, we kept going so many weeks with just this uncertainty of um, will they be in July? Will they be canceled? Will they be postponed? Like, should we still be training as hard as we can right now, even though we're limited? Um, and so a lot of athletes that I was talking to during this time, we kept trying to find ways to train, even though all we can really do right now is train at home in like our little apartments. Um, and so we're just like, okay, well, we have to stay active because you never know if they keep them in July, we have to be ready. And so we always had this stress kind of pressure and um, uncertainty in our head. And so I think the moment that they, they officialized the 
them postponing the Olympics, it was just more of like a relief, like, okay, now we can really focus on our health. The world can focus on their health. The athletes can uh, just take this time to stay as healthy as possible and relax. And then we have um, the positive is we still do have another year to train. So um, I think right now, especially with my teammates, I'm just trying to like find like the very positive things out of this, how we get it. We do get another year to train. Um, the whole world is on lockdown right now. It's on pause, which has never really happened. And so it just, it's a time for us to really just take a step back and just realize where we are in this um, situation and like what we need to do to move forward. And so I think right now I'm just kind of really relaxed about it just because I have a certainty. I know that it's going to be next year. I know that once we're done with this lockdown, we'll, we'll be full go with the national team. And so it's, um, I guess right now I'm more of like in a better mood about it, but I do say like one of the first thoughts of um, the Olympics being postponed or canceled, it was kind of heartbreaking just because we were so close four months out so close um to our dreams becoming reality and um having it postponed it does hurt a little bit but i'm also very grateful that they're they are postponed and not canceled so that's also a, a plus i guess what are you guys doing to stay connected during this time because i, I imagine i i don't know about you but i know for me it's like I, you know, I'm checking up on family and friends, making sure that everybody's okay. Um, Cause you never know, we're all like in our quarantine. So you don't know what's going mm -hmm. on between the ears, like over there and over there. Um, what are you guys doing to stay connected? Um, with just like my team or in general, like family and all that? Uh, just start with your team. With our team, um, well, we have a group chat. So we're always connected, always talking kind of, um, every day is like, what did you guys do today? What did you like give each other ideas? Um, we try to have a group video chat. So with Zoom or with Skype, we um, will have like a group, uh, we call it aperitivo. So it's, um, I don't know, it's in English it's aperitif or like happy hour, I guess you could call it, okay. happy hour. Okay. So like at five, 5 p.m. we'll um, video call, everyone has like a little drink in their hand and then we'll kind of catch up on the week. Um, and like vent to each other because for us it's really weird to not be um together as a team for so long just because we're a very close team um so we try to stay connected as much as possible we we um talk every single day though that's a hundred percent sure but we try to also um video call as much as we can with all the time that we have available <laughs> yeah um i don't know about you but uh <clears throat> music is like really getting me through a lot of this um what songs, albums, artists are are kind of helping you out during this quarantine time? Um, well, I've been, it depends on like the mood. So if I'm working out right now, I've been like Meg the Stallion, like full album, kind of just really trying to hype myself up, especially mm -hmm. since I'm by myself. Um, but when I'm like more relaxed, coloring and just trying to like relax, um, I've been listening to the Lauren Daigle album, both her albums. Okay. So it's kind of just really put me in, in um, a relaxed What kind of music? Mood. I've never heard of her. Lauren Daigle? Oh, she's, um, I want to say, I don't know what it's called, but it's like a Christian soulful music. Okay. Um, it's really, it's like her voice is, I compare it to like a Dell and um, okay. that like style of music so it's really I think really relaxing mm -hmm. to listen to and what kind of workouts have you been doing at home um I've been doing a lot of uh, body weight circuits and just trying to find some heavy objects in the house to lift a little bit like what um, like I have I had a box of wood for our chimney our fireplace and I did a leg day workout with that, just kind of squatting it, lifting it. Um, but lately I've just kind of been doing band work. So using a lot of bands. I bought a jump rope while in lockdown because that's the only type of cardio that I can get in right now. Um, so I've been jumping rope and running up and down my apartment complex stairs, trying to get my heart rate up, but just trying to find little things. It's like, it's workouts I'm not really used to mm -hmm. just because, um, 
as a softball athlete, you're used to just lifting heavy in the gym and like your running is there, but it's kind of at a minimum, especially at this time of the year when you're playing. Mm -hmm. And so uh, just trying to find things just to mainly just stay active and not just sit on the couch all day. But it's fun to come up with different circuits and I try to change them up every single day. Nice. And then on Netflix, what are you watching? I am watching, it's a Spanish show called Vis a Vis. Uh, I don't know if you guys have that in America. I don't know. But oh. I'm watching that and the show called Elite I've been watching, but that's also okay. Spanish. How many la- languages do you speak? I only speak English and Italian. So okay. I watch them with like, um, I watch them in Italian right now. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Awesome. And how's your family doing? My family's doing good. They're all healthy, which is really good. We're all really close um, in the city. So um, we're doing pretty, yeah, we're doing really good. We're healthy. That's all that matters right now. So. Mm-hmm. When do you hope to fly back to the States? Well, now is <laughs> it <laughs> depends because like yeah. Italy, we'll, we'll be out, we'll be done with this lockdown in a couple of weeks. Um, I know that, but by the time we get out, I'm sure it's going to just get started over there. Um, yeah. And so you're probably, probably right. not till the fall, <clears throat> probably not till the, um, after September, maybe around October, hopefully. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that helps me replan my um, Europe trip. I had a, I had a plan book. I had a trip booked in April and, um, Oh yeah. No. Yeah, no, it's definitely, I mean, I already got the message like this, this yeah. flight isn't happening. So here are your choices. <laughs> <laughs> that I know so many people that had plans this year with like trips. And mm-hmm. Yeah. So. It's a bummer, but you know, what do you do? You just try to stay safe. Exactly. It's like, what can you control? Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, it was uh, really nice talking to you. And I hope that... It's nice talking to you. Thank you. Yeah. um, I hope things improve there. Um, Definitely. I I know I'm worried a little bit about here. um, But we just got to do our part. And I would... I watched also your video that you posted, I think it was like 10 days ago or something. Um, My virus update. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) You got to keep giving people the updates. Yeah. I was just like, I feel like because a lot of my friends just didn't understand how serious it really was um, because it had just gotten to the States like a couple of cases and they kept asking me they're like was it is it a real thing like is it actually like killing people like are you guys actually on lockdown I'm like yeah like it's a real thing um it happens slowly so like you guys might not have a lot of cases right now but they will definitely um increase as the weeks go by just because of how the the virus works and so I just tried to like be as honest as I could but also try not to scare people um and so just always keeping that positive vibe out there and just trying to um, tell people that the only way for this to really pass is for everyone to do their part, stay at home when you're supposed to stay at home. Um, Don't take this as like a summer vacation because it's not, and you're only just going to ruin your actual summer vacation if you keep not doing your part. And so, um, I don't know. I've never ever done a video like that for Instagram. So I was just, it was kind of like, I had this thing, like a voice inside me telling me to just like record what I was feeling. And so I did. And a lot of people appreciated it, which was good. So hopefully in a couple of days, I can do another more positive update on how things are getting better. So mm-hmm. fingers crossed. Um, how can uh, more people uh, follow you and uh, Team Italy? on on your upcoming plans and just support what you guys are doing well our national team has an instagram page um it's i I think i just tagged them in a story i want to say it's italian softball official is their instagram at and they just have been posting updates on what the italian team is doing and like our next uh our plans for the coming up year um and then you can follow me on pretty much any social media. My at name is usually the same, Erka 
U R K A underscore 20. Um, and I try to uh, post as much as I can every day about the situation, about our training. Um, my, I have a fitness Instagram that ha I've been posting my workouts in. So uh, definitely just being active on all the social media just to try to get more people involved and more people to support um, our journey.